Hello everyone, I'm Rosi Grilma from Linz, Austria. Uh, thank you very much for the invitation and that I can um, present our project. Um, actually, this project was done together with two others, with Or Wolf and Ina Karatze, who are my study colleagues at the Department of Interface Cultures in Linz, which is a master's department. Um, we are in the last month of our studies, so I'm the only one lazy enough to not be there right now. <laughs> so the others are finishing all the courses. Um, yeah, and that's why they are in Linz and I'm here. Um, so just short about who are we. Or um, is from, from Israel. Uh, she's a graphic designer. She was a graphic designer, now she's also an interaction designer since, uh, since she's studying interface cultures in Linz. And Ina, she's from Georgia, she's a programmer and a game developer. And this is just one of many, pro um, let's say, in our course, we are encouraged to do a lot of projects every semester and start a lot of col collaborations. So for this project, the stretch instrument, the three of us work together. Um, by the way, our teacher, our lecturer, who we worked this, this program with, he is um, Enrique Thomas, who also worked here at Media Lab, Kike. <laughs> So we somehow closed the circle <laughs> by proposing, yeah, hi, <laughs> by coming here with this project. Okay, so what is it about? Um, actually, it's a really simple instrument, and I have the whole instrument here in my hands. <laughs> it's a stretch sensor uh, that we bought for 10 euros, and we tried, we made an instrument out of it. I mean, the most important thing here is the resistance value, and for what we did for the first performance that we had in January, we built it into a, into an, on a nail board with the stretch resistance. And by that, we, I, you can shortcut the circuits with the, you can shortcut it, you can stretch it. And by that, you have different values. And we started to control different audio parameters and videos. Uh, the best one was, do you rem remember the, the Washington Panda? It was playing in the snow and it was, had a lot of fun. It was a short video that in, in January a lot of people watched. And uh, we controlled the, the video of the panda playing in the snow and behind we had a speech about global warming. Um, but the panda, I think 99% of the people really focused on the panda that was controlled by the stretch sensor. And yeah, that was kind of, uh, part of the performance that we did. So it's not only an instrument like a musical instrument, you can also use it as an interface also with this kind of analog connotation of a guitar string that when you have, um, that you can read from it. Um, so maybe a bit more background to it, what we have so far. Um, yep. Yeah, this is the sensor. I put it, by the way, I set up this website about the instrument here and, and what we are going to do here at Media Lab. So if you're interested in what is it, you can just click here on the link. And for now, it's this wonderful string here, and let's see what we can do with it. There are different possibilities. I also brought a lot of other sensors, so the idea could be we could build a whole instrument, maybe we can 3D print something, we could add other sensors to it and see how to interface it, make it maybe as a part of a bigger sound performance. Maybe some pictures of the performance that we had. Now you can see my Facebook friends. Um, so what you can see here, this was our set of performance. There were many different approaches. We had the setup with the nail board that we were playing with the visuals that were programmed by Ina in processing. Then there were other projects, for example, one with a guitar and a leap motion and a lot of experimental instruments like these jellyfish um, being in Im image processed. Uh, one, interest, one aspect was uh, our alcohol sensor that uh, put an overlay of distortion by the average of drunkness of the audience to the whole setup. So it got more experimental <laughs> in the course of the evening. <laughs> yeah, and basically yeah, this is what we are doing at Interface Cultures. Um, for me, it was the first time having a performance with a, with a music instrument because um, 
I'm more into programming and real-time data visualization and interactive installations. But what I really like about our department is that you're thrown into different contexts and then you have to, for example, Kike just told us that we will have a public performance in the end of his lecture and then we kind of went with it. <laughs> so, um, what else about it? Yeah, this is some ideas how it could look in the future. This is the sensor. And here I put some software together that we could work with. Um, of course, Arduino would be the basis. And then we could try different ones. Um, we worked with MaxMSP because that's what we, um, what the software we use at Interface Culture and what we learned at the, in the first semester. And for this, we made the audio, um, the audio part and the video part for manipulating them. So this is what we already have, what's already in existence. But as you might see, I'm also really a fan of a different <laughs> um, um, visual programming software, which is VVV, um, which is a more community-based tool. So um, if there are collaborators who want to work with VVV, I would also be very happy <laughs> if you use this instead. And um, as I said, I'm not a musician, but I like Pure Data a lot. I've just had a look inside, so if there is a people who like to work with Pure Data, perfect. <laughs> so we could go into um, yeah, working on the, um, on the audio part, far, um, a lot more in depth. Exactly, so that's the possibilities we have. We have an Arduino sketch, we have processing part, we have visuals, we have a, max, a working Maxim SP um, for this wonderful uh, schneel, as we say in Austria. And yeah, that's the project so far. And what I proposed for this, the coming two weeks, you can find it of course in the community. And here is also a lookout of what um, what was already done, what can I do, and what, could, what would be great if the collaborators could bring, for example, yeah, of course, electronics, Arduino, um, then the musicians would be great, as I'm really new to music, <laughs> to, and, yeah, to making music, um, and maybe a 3D printing genius, so we have a really nice instrument in the end of the two weeks. Uh, and about what I can do, um, as I said, I'm mainly programming with Java and processing, VVV also. Um, I'm okay, I can do electronics and Arduino stuff, but yeah, as I said, audio, I would be really happy if someone would join to help me get also more into depth with this. Yeah, thank you very much. Questions? I just have a little technical question to that stretch sensor. What is it made of and where did you get it from? This one you can buy it from Adafruit, from the, from the shop, and it's, a, it's just a stretch resistance sensor. A stretch resistance sensor. Um, that when you coat it, there is also a coated one, and then you um, can, for example, then it's not always short cutting itself, for example. So it's, we used it on the one hand to play it like a guitar, and on the other to make it as a visual interface, uh, as a digital interface. Hi, um, are you willing to develop that in analog or only digital? Like the digital output of the sensor? So you're willing to develop that? Or could you also like see into developing it the analog? Because it's such an interesting, it moves in a really, I don't know, I think you can do many things with also the analog um, side, side to it. If we build it as a guitar, for example, with a resonance room, then this could be also played, as you can hear. But um, yeah, and the other way is just connecting it to the Arduino and reading the resistance that you can either stretch like this or you put it, you shortcut it. Okay. Like, uh, ah, that's one, what, that was actually one of the videos that we have here. Oop. Unfortunately, there is no sound, but it's just a frequency control for that purpose. It's getting higher and lower um, as long as it takes for the sound to travel. Uh, the, the electricity to travel. 
So for example, when we, I'm touching it with finger and by that time, shortcutting those. Do you have a recording of how it sounds? Punt? Do you have a recording of how it sounds? It sounds like this? <laughs> no, but <laughs> with shapes, you were talking about a performance you did, right? Do you have yeah. a... Um, the performance, unfortunately, I don't have the audio recording with me. On the one hand, we were controlling the speed of a video and if it was going forward of, um, uh, yeah or reverse, and also we, had, we, were, we were controlling the speed of, of music and speech of people and making them louder. I was also thinking if we had more than one of these, we could alter different um, parameters of the sound by using them apart from each other. Uh, the question was, what is the part that is done in Max? Yeah, what, what, what did you do before? Um, and if it can be done in BBB, because uh -huh. we, we try to work with open source technologies, and also we have to remain here for a, for a bit, and I don't know if it, it can be avoided or not. But, uh, the first part of the project, uh, of the program is in um, is Arduino. Here um, they show that it's, you set it up really easy, like a thermistor, uh, and there they also show a tutorial what you need on the Arduino, and then what comes out of the serial port of the Arduino, like it's just messaging to the Max, to Max. Like where is it? Yeah, here. So this is everything you need to have in the Arduino, and from that the serial port well, okay, so we, we can just send it to BBB and that's all, no? Exactly, so you can use the direct uh, simple messaging system or you can use OSC, any, any data protocol. Um, I showed it here in, in the last post on the website. You can see uh, how to interface, how to connect basically Arduino with any of the audio and visual software. And this is going to be like an installation, finally, or it's going to happen a performance too, or mm -hmm. maybe you're thinking something about? Or? I would say it would be great to have a performance with it in the end. I don't know yet which, if it will be visual one, I guess it will be more audio one, but yeah, let's see how the instrument will look, how complex it will be, if it's only the instrument or part of a setup. For now, we have two of these sensors, but more are coming, I read. Yeah. Kilometers. Meters. Two, ah, meters, OK. But do you think we could put it once through Madrid? I just, uh, I really would like to have kilometers of this wire. <laughs> Yeah, I actually was um, also wondering if you had thought whether this instrument could be on a really large scale, like a full body instrument, is maybe what, <laughs> why we would love kilometers of this. Because uh, oh, okay. this. this would be quite nice if you could really like oh, yeah. be yeah, having to pull in with the whole body. Dimensions. Yeah, I think it would be amazing if it's big, but maybe it would be quite a challenge to mm -hmm. do it. But then it could really be something that's more of a choreographed performance of how you play the instrument mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, we could have a really big space with it. We have, good, we have good. lots of space. <laughs> Public space. Yeah. But great, thank you. Any more questions? Okay, so thank you very much. <laughs>